All right. To get things clear, I believe in gun control as it stands. Right? People say, oh, we need gun control. We need this. We need that. Well, let me tell you something, boo-boo. We already have gun control, and it's already strict enough as it is. I swear, those of y'all who actually believe that we have zero c gun control and advocate it like it's sugar in a pitcher of Kool-Aid are the worst kinds of people, right? Especially since they advocate so hard to get more gun control, but they don't know what they're even talking about. They don't want to do their research. They don't want to talk to attorneys to get more information about gun control. Usually, they just go off what the media says and what their friends tell them. Trust me, I know a few. And I know this is on a media platform, but I've done my research. I've done everything I need to have an actual opinion about this, right? But let, let's get this started. What even is gun control in the first place? Gun control is actually a set of laws or policies that regulate the manufacture, sale, transfer, possession, or modification of firearms. Woo! That's a lot to swallow. Let's break it down real quick. The manufacture of firearms, meaning the differences between semi-auto, automatic, and the latter being illegal, right? And everyone knows automatic guns are illegal. Or do they? Sale. The selling of firearms to minors, convicted felons within five years of their release, and people in the penal system. Well, the last one shouldn't be a concern, right? Because, you know, they're locked up, boo. Transfer. Goes along with sale. It's the physical transfer of a firearm from a dealer to a customer after the screenings and background checks have been co completed. Possession. The, illegal the illegality of a person to be in possession of a firearm includes... Minors who have been, who have obtained a firearm illegally or through illicit means, <laughs> or by those deemed unfit to wield a firearm. Modification deals with illegal modifications one can make to, to a legal gun to make it illegal, such as a bump stock, which basically turns a semi-automatic into a fully automatic, while still being classified as a semi-automatic. They were illegal until only last year, when the Trump administration actually had guns with a bump stock classified as a machine gun, right? So, what a bump stock does is it pushes back, right? And well, as long as your finger's on the trigger, the trigger pushes back and it, it, it's basically like this. Pop, 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 pop. It turns a semi-auto into fully automatic because the semi-automatic is as fast as you can pull the trigger, but you're pulling it faster if you got a bump stock, right? So, some of y'all may be thinking, but well, what does gun control even do for us anyway? It's not like I'll ever own a gun. Well, that's where the Second Amendment comes into play, and as it states, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And if a free state decides they want to infringe upon the Second Amendment rights to bear arms, the law is considered unconstitutional and invalid. But, there are of course some exceptions. Not every gun is legal, and of course, I'll list them out for you. Well only the commonly prohibited ones. Machine guns, of course, fully automatic weapons are extremely dangerous and are only used by military personnel and law enforcement officers only in the case where no other alternative is seen. short barreled weapons are illegal because the projectile is shot propels at a much higher speed than if the barrel were to be complete, right? Silencers and silenced weapons. This one is also pretty self-explanatory because in in case someone does use a silenced weapon for harm and obtain the gun illegally, it is much harder to figure out where the shots are coming from because they are nowhere near as loud as the shots as it would be without one. Armor piercing and ammunition, also kind of self-explanatory. You can shoot through a car a lot easier than if you're using a regular round, and that car just so happened could, could be the president's limo, so I, I don't, don't use armor piercing rounds, right? And then zip guns. These are improvised guns that are made for cheap and can be extremely dangerous towards yourself or towards the people around you, right? You, you, you could buy parts for a zip gun for like $7 in total and make a highly lethal gun, right? It's a full ass essay because I gotta do it for a project, right? But what about Australia? They heavily reduced their gun control laws and their homicides dropped by 42% in the seven years afterwards. 
But as an article by the New York Times points out, Australia's gun laws are not a model for the U.S. The reasons he's are valid and articles article is written in a formal manner without the use of emotional tactics to convince others to follow a certain agenda. In the article he writes, we Australians have a profoundly different relationship with weapons. Americans love guns. We're scared of them. Which if you realize what that means is America, if America was able to implement Australia like gun laws, it would be met with an enormous amount of backlash and possible physical altercations. But unlike Australia, we've had altercations on our own soil with the Revolutionary War, War 1812, and the Civil War, all of which played a massive part in our history and what America is as a country today. Also, Australia's constitution doesn't have its own version of our Second Amendment because they never had the fear of tyrannical government that used force to get them to do what they want, the British government. Let's dive a little deeper. Some of y'all may not realize or know is that suicide is one of the leading causes of death in America, right? And the use of guns makes up for over 50% of the methods of, you know, doing, doing, doing the act. Which, a simple, easy solution would be just to mo remove guns, right? Well, for that answer, we have to go even deeper. From 1999 to 2014, gun suicides rates among white and middle-aged men, the group with the highest risk factor, factor for suicide have dropped 6.3% and death by suff suffocation or hanging has increased by 7.7% which would just keep increasing and stricter gun laws wouldn't decrease suicide rates. This trend is already showing an increase in the use of hanging as to the use of guns. The same trend extends across all groups with high risk factors such as Alaskan Natives and American Indian children especially followed by non-Hispanic white middle-aged males. Suicide rates are still on an upwards trend and have gotten worse within the past couple of years. From 1997 to 2007, suicide was trending up at a 1% growth and since after 2007, su suicide rates have been growing down or go growing at 2% you know, as of 2014. Mass shootings when advocating for stricter gun laws is where people always turn to. Whilst mass shootings are horrifying and should be a thing of the past, they only account for a small fraction of gun violence in the USA. Even though mass shootings make up only a small amount of gun violence, I believe it influences others to commit other atrocities to try and get the recognition that a mass shooter gets, right? And that increases his gun violence tremendously. Over half of the people that commit vi violent mass shootings have serious mental health issues, which creates a correlation between mental health and gun violence. So, to close, the way to decrease gun violence through suicide and mass shootings and other gun violence, we have to eliminate the stigmatism behind mental illness that we have. That would be the most effective way to reduce the rates of death via the use of guns. If the stigmatism of mental health problems is gone, many people that have mental health issues but get help and the people around them will get the help will get them the help they need. Guns aren't the issue. Mental health is. And the help they don't receive is the issue. Let let's think about that for a hot second. See I wrote that on Saturday, right? I did a lot of research over that. I know my stuff around gun control and what gun control laws do for us as American citizens. And to rephrase on what I said earlier, Australia is not the type of model we want to use as American citizens because Australia they were protected by the British and they never had to push the British out or fight a tyrannical government like the, the British like we had to because we wanted to be ourselves and we were treated like crap by the British government so we decided to fight back right and you know the British government fought back to us fighting back 
And so, you know, there's guns on U.S. soil that had to be used for our freedom. Same thing with War 1812, and definitely same thing with the Civil War. What, what, what y'all got to say about gun control? I've been shooting guns my whole life. And, you know, I've been using it not for sport. Like, you know, some people out there shoot, using guns for a sport and to just kill big game. And not use it the animal you killed? No. That's pretty that's pretty BS. That's not something that I advocate for. But using it for food like that, we ate we ate the crap out of that. He tasted good. And I wanted him oh crap, I can't. I wanted him mountain mounted because you know he's beautiful. But I didn't shoot him. Just to say I shot him and just to get that wall hanging, right? I shot him because first we were on a friend's land and my dad's an avid deer hunter and I like the taste of venison. It's pretty good. So I would never, ever kill an animal just to kill an animal, right? I, be I believe in what the, what the Native Americans had had uh, had believed in right to use every single part of the animal after you kill it to show respect for nature and the people that don't show respect for nature and use guns against you know uh, animals just to my cat's the greatest bro I know and that they use guns against people and other animals just to kill them. Right now, uh, uh, there that that's where I draw draw a line, right? I I don't believe in that. Sh show the cat. Well, I got sh scissors. I do really have a lizard, and there's kittens right there. I'll, I'll see. I'll see. I'll t take it off for you. All right. What's up, y'all? extra honorary today it's been cold outside hey it's been really cold outside she's awfully awfully adorable isn't she I love her lizards lizards do have genders and she is a she Toothless. It's a snake? No, it's not. Look, look at those legs. Look at those legs. It's a lizard. She talks to Mike about my lizard again. Bane fucking lizard. Mm. 